he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn! Going to go for it, fourth and ten. Shotgun formation, trips to the right. Miller taking the snap and throwing downfield. It's intercepted at the 20, to the 25, to the 30, at the 40, at the 45. And knocked out of bounds toward the midfield is Larry Casher. <laughs> good y'all I feel good God, they, every, every one of you we all feel good because we talked last night about what we individually had to do we talked about enthusiasm an attitude a genuine love and a faith and each of us have it and men well you know what it, it, you're never as bad as it seems as good as it seems but we made strides now man we made strides now we're ready to take the season on. Let's have a good time tonight. Enjoy ourselves. Forget a, lot, forget a little football. Forget a little football. We'll come back Sunday. Y'all be on your own looking at film. We'll come back get a game plan. We'll get ready for the LSU Tigers. Yeah. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. What a big win for the Tigers, a road win, a win in the West Division, and a shutout. I mean, that's a lot of good stuff, Coach. Well, we needed it, you know, after that first weekend. We needed to have something to build our confidence and make us feel good. Uh, and we got it. The fans were there, great crowd. Uh, uh, the players, just, I couldn't find an area of our team that I wasn't just uh, excited about. A good full win, offense, defense, kicking game, and a great win, like you said, on the road against Ole Miss. And, and uh, your ability to run inside with the fullback is an indication that the offense is, is beginning to come. Well, we're not a great running team yet, but we're a pretty good one. You know, we control the clock better than we do the score. We 21 minutes on the field the first half, 35 throughout the game. But the fullback is running and catching. The tight end is catching. Balance this year truly means balance. We don't have an overload of receivers, an overload of tailbacks. We've got to get it to everybody. And so offensively, that's what we can do. And defense, last week we played good. This week, we went back to trying to be a dominant defense. If we can play balanced ball control offense and then give our defense less time on the field, we've got a chance. Yeah, those are the keys to victory. Let's go to the dressing room, and we'll talk to some of the players just minutes after the great win at Ole Miss. So we felt that we come in this week and uh, get a lot of pressure on We can make a lot of things happen. And the DB played a great job, and everybody played together, and that's about our defense. How good, DB? What is that, number How three? Good. Uh, that's one. The one, but number three for a career, right? Yeah. Wasn't bad, huh? It wasn't too, it wasn't too bad. I, at first, I, it kind of let me down a little bit, but, you know, I... I figure the defense is going to, you know, step up, and when the defense step up, I step up. First career interception, I believe. Yes, sir, it is. It's about time. Uh, <laughs> now, you know, I've been taking ridicule here for a year now, and all through the summer, I've been working on my hands a little bit, and uh, it just paid off, so, you know, I'm thankful for it. I'm glad you were tall as you are, because you had to reach as far as you could to get it. I know. They say that I got up for it. It, it seemed like it just came right to me, though. I saw it, you know, right out of his hand, and, uh, you know, I, just luckily I was in the right place at the right time. We just want to come out this week and play brother all of the defense and all defense and we did and hopefully let's get better and get us that issue next week. Everybody was taking care of their responsibility. We were cooperating as a team and we were able to pressure him, throw him some, make him throw some bad passes and even the interception. Bottom line is just give us an effort, have fun doing it and just see what happens and something really happened good out there. I think we took it, you know, took another step forward. We're not all the way there, you know, we still got to improve but we're definitely a step closer to where we want to be. Uh, we need the mantra back. Uh, um, we have the mantra back, 100 offensive down, a whole lot better threat. So I hope he did well and he get him making a rotation and ready to play. And the munch is off my back. Uh, it feels a lot better. Anytime winning feels better than losing, but, you know, I think as a team we played a heck of a football game today. We went out and executed and had a lot of enthusiasm and just played all the football. Top day at Vaught Hemingway Stadium, which has been renovated, uh, about 8,000 seats added, nice crowd on hand, record crowd, 48,000 uh, and uh, 300, I believe. As we get into the uh, action, 
you'll see that straight road tiger walk, which is uh, really something for the players. Well, our fans are always there, and uh, um, it's Cheryl and I, and uh, it's a great feeling. You know, guy, you come off of a tough loss, and, 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 and you, you take some heat or some criticism, but the fans are always there for us. Great crowd. They made great during the game, and so our players need that. They need the, the, the uh, uh, togetherness of Auburn, and uh, um, you'll see right off the bat, our defense came to play football. They, it was a swarming defense, and uh, I, I don't, poor Ole Miss, I, just did, I don't think they knew it hit them. Watch during this uh, tape, uh, how many times uh, Miller is hurried, how many times he is, is sacked, or how many times he's hit after he throws the ball? I mean, well, look at the field position that they give our offense is great. We, 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 we win the field position battle because of the defense, the way we came out and started. Uh, Nice big play. Here's a big catch on a third down. Gets us to a fourth and inches. Great run by Eric Lowe. Eric Lowe's come through. Mm. And been a, a, a big very game. big player for us now. There's a quarterback sneak on the fourth and inches. Uh, we won't have to play it like that this year. We're going to have to take chances, uh, go for it a few times, uh, and do some things. There's the option. Uh, we had some big plays to get to the outside of the option. You know, uh, those famous bunch em up plays that my wife calls them that we run in the middle <laughs> and get kind of old. But when you can go outside, uh, and do this stuff. Here's the little jump ball. He, we ask him to just throw it up and let him have a chance. And boom, there it is. Uh, Carson Bailey seems to catch a deep ball every year against Ole Miss. And he's done another one. But that was that was just a uh, uh, that touchdown was so important for oh, offense. You can't you can't we minimize that stuff. one. Can no, you? that that <laughs> first one seemed like it. Look at this. Baronis has kicked so many balls out of the end zone. He he may have a stronger leg. Well, he does. Than Jared Holmes. Yeah. And uh, we feel really good. But here again. Romero Miller throwing down. Look at that. Uh, Rob Pate making his first interception of his career at Auburn. And, uh, boom, the defense has put us in field position again. And so within a few minutes, we come right back, throwing out there to Clifton Robinson. That's he caught catch. some good balls. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved the ball around. We moved it. There's the big fullback going in the middle for a short yardage. For the first down. Heath Evans, uh, uh, again, 240 pounds. He catches. He runs. There's the quarterback. Finds the tight end down the sideline after the boom. He's going down. He's going to take it down to the one-yard line again. And now we're cooking. I think we've caught him off balance. Uh, played great defense. We've won a lot of naked bootlegs by the quarterback. There's some Heath Evans over the top. And he's got his first score as an Auburn Tiger as a redshirt freshman. And so he and uh, uh, Roman Nelson did real well at fullback. And uh, tight ends caught a few balls. And the Auburn people are happy. The defense is doing what they do. Look at that. Look at them swarming there. Look at them getting out. Jimmy Brumball and everybody else getting on the play. We played a lot of linebackers inside. Uh, we are able to do that. We were able to rest our people. As he hurried again. Hurried again, and it, boy, uh, Ryan Taylor just gave him a hit. And they're moving backwards right now. Down at the end of the quarter now. Here's the offense again. Find, boy, I tell you, there, there we find Clifton Robin coming, Robinson coming across the field. We had him in short motion. But all we're doing offensively, more than scoring, we are keeping the defense off the field. In 30-minute first half, Offen our offense is on the ball 20 and a half minutes or 21 minutes, and now they're able to play even more aggressive. Look at them go. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I tell you, that's so good. Charles Dorsey and Jeff Dunlap. There's Tavarius Pound, uh, Larry Third Cashin. Third and seven. There's a tip by, or oh, it's a beautiful tip. It might have been Jeff Dunlap. I couldn't tell. Uh, Haven Field. Haven Field's got that one. That was big. Coming out of linebacker position. Now the offense again. There's the big fullback. Look at the power. Oh, I love it. It's my old-fashioned <laughs> football there. Brings up a second and one. He's going to get it again. Well, he does it again. Watch this. Boom. There he goes. Knock a guy over. Come on, make, that, make those safeties punish him a little bit and, and get excited. So I, I think they're getting excited out there. Geno James, his mom and dad right there at Tiger Walk every time to cheer us on. There's a third and nine. Boy, that's good pressure, good pressure, good pressure. I think it's just a, uh, it's a different, different situation there. And, uh, Big third seven play here. Auburn's going to make a long drive, but... Uh, Boom, there it is. Oh, that was great. Carson Belly. Ben Lear just threw some nice passes. We dropped about four of his passes, or he'd have thrown about 50%, I mean, about 80%. Boy, there's a nice... Look at the fullback blocking Roman Nelson. A big first down on the option. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's helping us a lot, getting it stretching the defense. Third and long coming here. Mm -hmm. we get it down to... Here's a really uh, fourth, and one. fourth and one, but it was a long one. I should have kicked the field goal to go in Sunday night, but I was on a roll thinking this way we do. I ran it, and it was not a good. It was on a fourth and one. They're going to pinch. If you're going to run it on fourth and one, you got to get outside. And, and uh, I should have kicked the field goal or run to the outside, but the field goal would have put 17 on the board. Thank goodness it didn't come back to haunt us. Because you know when you when you're making calls and say let's go for it, let's let's be wide open, you still got to take advantage of scoring opportunities. And so thank goodness that didn't make make a difference in the game. But uh, 
it was still an outstanding first half performance. But like you said, the uh, uh, the 21 minutes of holding the football rested your defense, and when Ole Miss did get the ball a lot in the second half, the defense was not tired. Oh, there's no question. I think our defense, unlike last week when our offense kind of could not control mm -hmm. the clock in the second half, we wore our defense out. So we're playing together, and I think we are a team that's got to play offense and defense together. We're not going to be conservative anymore, but by being balanced, Hopefully, we can not only uh, uh, be a good football team offensively, but be a team that will help uh, our defense. And we'll be back in just a minute. Is it the new Tiger Team Village? It's located just outside Jordan-Hare Stadium near Plainsman Park. There you'll find all kinds of interactive activities and displays, as well as the Auburn Network's live pregame radio show. Plus, you'll want to stop by the new Tiger Team store to pick up the best and officially licensed Auburn merchandise. You'll even be able to see and say hello to former uh, Tiger quarterback Damian Craig and former head coach Pat Dye. And speaking of the Tiger team store, you'll find the official STP, something to prove lapel pins, just like uh, the coach and I are wearing here. And you can place your order through the Auburn Network store by calling that number, 1-800-208-2112 during regular business hours. Coach, I think that something to prove lapel is fairly appropriate for this week. Well, you know, it is, because we still have something to prove. In a way, uh, we've always been trying to prove something at Auburn, uh, I think, from a football standpoint. But uh, after the opening game, we really had something to prove against uh, um, Ole Miss. But o LSU brings a top-10 team now, and a team that people probably gave us no chance to win last week. It's a big game, and we've got something to prove this week. Well said. The J&M Bookstore Tiger of the game. What do you think? You know, the one missing link of this team making strides is was at quarterback. And I thought Ben Leard answered some questions for Auburn, for everyone at Auburn. He's going to be a fine quarterback. We always knew that. Now I think he's totally convinced of that, and our team is. He needs to make as many strides this week as last week, but I think we're going to see a better Ben Leard each and every week. Ben Leard, the J&M Bookstore Tiger of the game. Score, this game is in really good shape the way the defense is playing. Yeah, I think it was always one more score away from being mm -hmm. our game, and it came late, it didn't come quickly, mm -hmm. and uh, but we had to keep trying to get it in. Okay, let's uh, start the action with uh, the Rebels with the ball and Deuce McAllister running. Not much. He's an outstanding running back, Joe Gunn and, and Deuce McAllister. We were able to stop him though and, and, and keep him from making something happen, and then pressure there. You know, Quentin Reese had a big game, we he needed him. Marcus Washington has been a bundled enthusiasm and effort, and Ryan Taylor is so consistent. But you get Quentin Reese playing good also. It gives you three outside backers with a lot of experience. They tried to stretch the corner. Jason Bray, Jay, uh, Antoine Nolan finished him off. Jason Bray was all around that football. Yeah. I, I don't know yet how all these guys graded, but I know I saw the game and they played. Look at the pressure there. Roderick Chambers and Quentin Reese putting a pound on him. Uh, Rob Pate there almost intercepted that ball. Kendall Simmons has been working on a sprained ankle. He had to come out a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Colin Sears had to play a lot for him. Another deflection, Jeff Dunlap. He's about 6'4 and a half, 6'5, defensive tackle. Make a big play there. The offense is back on the field in good field position. This comes a big pass play on a first and 10 at uh, the Auburn 28. We call those naked, just naked rollouts by the quarterback. Look at, that, look at the power there to our fullback. He made, caught the ball in the flat, uh, made good yards. He has good speed and good hands. But the line was blocking well, I, and I'm, I'm really pleased for our linemen uh, uh, and the effort they gave. Boy, that's a shame there. The tight end made a big third down catch. We're going to go down and get ahead three touchdowns here at least. And he holds on. I mean, he covered the ball, but they hit it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Boy, look at, ooh, golly, there's a, a Leonardo Carson hitting him again. And uh, Boy, he had, some, he had some really big plays. He sure did. It just kept, it kept them off balance. You watch the pressure. There's, oh, Charles Dorsey making that. This is the one catch. I don't know if y'all watch games. They had they had to, to throw three seconds after the clock, right. the 25 the clock second clock out. was over. That should have been a five yard penalty the other way, but it <laughs> changed field position for a while. But here it changed right back. Larry Cash with pick number three in his career, big pick got us back, and this began to put them, put them away. I tell you, it was big for us. Our band was cranked up. We had a good b band that came out there dressed out. You know, it was before school, and the cheerleaders were going crazy over there. Did a great job for us. But the offense is back on the field. Carson Bailey, another big catch. He had four good catches. Good throw, too. Good low 60 throw. 60 yards, and uh, uh, Ben was putting it right on the money. He's in third and five here. Watch this good Oh, just raised it. Very conservative, but, yeah. but, but really uh, protected the ball well. Got the first down by about a yard, and uh, our fans are standing up now, waiting for something, waiting to finish these guys off. Michael Burke carried 22 times for 60 yards. He's he a hard rusher, just mm -hmm. a hard runner. And uh, 
Really ran for 70, but we had about 10 yards losses. But Robert Baronis came with his first collegiate kick, puts it through 17 to nothing. And you really feel now that uh, the way our defense is playing, uh, if we just don't turn the ball over, we'll look at that sack right there. Josh Weldon, good to see Josh, the red shirt freshman right there. The various pounds there, Clinton Reese around the ball. You'll see some numbers there and some names right here that you hadn't seen for a while. Boy, there's, a, there's that, that defense is getting after them now. Mm -hmm. Getting after them good, and it's just and, it, and it's fun, and they're having fun. That's what I like. <laughs> Watch there's 39, Roderick Chambers, and then and Damon and, and Beasley, uh, mm -hmm. David Beasley, uh, also on the brush there uh, for the for the front people. I'm just watching the different people there. You know, there, there's Roderick Chambers again in that group. Boy, almost picked off twice in a row by Jason Gray. Uh, Antoine banged up a little bit there, but. Boy, it just looks like a matter of time now before uh, uh, this thing is, is, is... Here comes Kenny Kelly. Look at Kenny Kelly. Look at Kenny Kelly, junior college transfer. We couldn't quite find a place for him. We're linebacker, safety. We're, uh, he's a rush defensive end, and he can get to that quarterback quick. But, uh, it was a great... Uh, you know, we don't have Ralph and Coley with us anymore. Yeah. We've got a great yeah. new bu bunch there, a state policeman, and, and uh, it's nice to shake that hand after a win. I bet Coley was watching. I bet he, I bet he was. He was out there in heart. <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute with some final comments. Work production. Wide out to either side. Tech showing blitz. Short drop by Gross. Quarterback draw. He'll take it himself. He'll spin inside the five. Break a tackle. He darts in there. Touchdown, Auburn! Here is Rete back to throw out of the shotgun. Forced out of the pocket. They're after him. He's reversing his field. Twisting, turning. He's back all the way to the goal line. They've dropped him in the end zone. That is an Auburn safety. For a seven for Rute, backpedaling and throwing. Pass is deflected. It is intercepted. Antoine Nolan. 45, 40, 35, down the far sideline. Cuts it back to the inside. Breaks into the clear at the 10. He's at the five. He's gone. Gross takes the deep snap. They're after him. He throws screen pass. Burks behind the line. He's at the 30. He broke the tackle. 25, 20. Cuts back to the inside at the 15. He's to the 10. Still on his feet at the five. He's in. Touchdown, Auburn. Why do you say you come in here? I don't sing very good. I always stand in the background Let's and I go, don't bro. know it, so you got to do it for me. Let's go, bro. Go there. Go Y'all have been through heck. And what you just got through doing, you deeply deserve. You just don't know how proud of it. Ain't be part of it, man? I'm telling you, buddy. I'm telling you. It, you were not that talented. But we addressed something last night that we're going to take today, try to win and enjoy. Act like gentlemen with maturity. Do what you're supposed to do and enjoying it tonight. Come back and meet as a group. We said we want to be intelligent how we practice. We want to practice with quality time, not length of time. We're beyond mid-season. We want to be smart with it. You got to be smart again with maturity. We're going to play some very talented people down the stretch. But we said last night that we would address it when. When did we say we'd address it? Monday. Monday. And that's when we're going to address it. Everybody's proud of you. And uh, be very complimentary to Louisiana Tech because I'm going to tell you something. I told you beforehand, I'm saying I, but we knew as a coaching staff that they were pretty doggone talented. But you kept your poise and went on and some things that we can really improve on and use this as a stepping stone because We'll talk about that next one, like I say, Monday. But again, enjoy yourself, and uh, we'll see you then, okay? Yes, All right, man. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. To briefly review the events of the last three days, on Friday, Coach Terry Bowden resigned as head coach of the Auburn Tigers. Bill Oliver was asked to take the head coaching responsibilities. He accepted uh, those responsibilities, and I suppose that 24 hours from Friday afternoon to Saturday afternoon after that game was probably the most interesting you've had in a long time, Coach. Well, I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about a lot of people, really and truly, and uh, Coach Bowden and 
Cheryl and their family, you know, we certainly wish them the best. They'll take a lot of fond memories with them. And uh, there are times in our lifetime that are certainly tough. And nobody ever said things were always going to be easy. But uh, hopefully for the Auburn, uh, everything with Auburn and everything, the family we call it, and everything, everything can, we can get everything united and just keep on going because Auburn is bigger than any one individual I said, or any two or three individuals. So let's keep going. All right. Good statement. Let's go into the dressing room now after that big 32 to 17 win over Louisiana Tech. Coming from that safety, you know, I just got my hands up and my boy came and cleaned them on up. This your boy over here? Yeah, it's Move him over here where we can see it. <laughs> hey, I also like the tackle on a reverse. That started the safety. Yeah, um, I just followed my keys, you know, when I saw him coming, they had a slant that way and it smelled funny because, you know, when they let you go without too much touch, when something's going to happen, I just read my keys and made a bit of play. Feel kind of strange? A little bit. I'm sitting out for a while, coming back, you know, playing. You got a few snaps today. Yeah, just about every snap. Really? Yeah, I started. I didn't get out until the fourth quarter. How'd it feel? Good, good. I felt pretty good. I had a good week of practice. Everything worked? <laughs> yeah. You know, coming into the game, we knew he had been sacked a lot, and that's kind of one of, one of, was one of our goals, just to get back there and try to get some pressure on him, if not sack him. So I think we, we did a pretty good job today. Running game starting to work a little. Hey. Yeah, you know what, me and Mike, we just go out there and run hard every day. And, uh, you know, we just try to give it our all fire coach, man. All right. And you broke a tackle or two on that touchdown. Oh, yeah. We had to, uh, one of us had to make a play. And, uh, <laughs> one of us had to make a play. <laughs> and, you know, me and Demonte ran hard. And, uh, you know, we held the ball tight. We got that win. And I believe we're on the road now. Handling the emotion of last night was something that nobody really knew how you all would be able to do, but you apparently handled it well. I think we did. It's something that just came on as kind of unexpected, but, uh, you know, we uh, we responded to Coach Oliver well, I thought, today, and uh, came out, and, you know, everybody, we've been playing hard all year long, and that didn't change today. Everybody played hard and, uh, you know, gave it all they had. Get into the first half of play, and uh, we'll begin with the Tiger Walk, and uh, as... Uh, Bill Oliver will tell you a little later on in the program, it was very interesting, but very emotional, too, I would guess. Well, you get Bill, I've, I've never been through anything like that. I normally go to the stadium ahead, you know, and sit down and read a little bit of stuff, you know, and, but it was really something. Uh, that's what it's all about. This you know. ovation when this team ran on the field was something special, too. I know they, everybody in the stands knew the circumstances, and they wanted to welcome those guys out there. I think it really helped. Well, I was in the press box. But again, let's go right here. There's Nardo Carson, you know, with a good rush. I bet Marcus Washington would love to have that opportunity again. We've got to make those things happen. But again, we had good pressure by Carson there. This right here, I made a poor call right here defensively. Number one, I had us in a man-to-man -man concept, and uh, we this guy's a great athlete. He's going to do that against a lot of people. We had him in our grasp, and, and that's Troy Edwards, who's a leading receiver in the nation and will be a great NFL player. Three and out here, so things are really looking Louisiana Tech's way for a moment, but then the turnovers are going to turn things around. That's a great tackle by Kenny Kelly right there. Kenny's a hybrid linebacker, and and uh, has, has already made some contributions, and we need to use him more. Here comes the uh, interception, first interception of the day. That's good pressure by Mike, uh, Marcus Washington there that caused that, and, uh, and of course, with Kenny, he was very alertly in the right spot. You know, I didn't mention something about people like Brent Turner snapping on the punt, but uh, You're right. those things are awfully important, too. That's Jack Swagger right there. Phil and Jack broke his arm yesterday and they had he had surgery last night he's in Birmingham and I hope he's doing fine and it's a shame because he's really coming into his own right now we got good blocking there by uh, Gino James and Kendall Mack there and Demontre Carter carrying the ball here on the pitch sweep Priscilla and Kubelik back in the lineup helps huh? Yes I tell you what uh, he's been out you know since one of those guys that was working at center that broke his foot and He's got him back, and he'll make quite a contribution down the stretch here. There's the draw. Gabe Gross taking him in to tie the game. It's fine running. Great up, and again, you know, good blocking. Again, Chilla, Mack, Sears, and Curry, and Geno James there. And we just need to get a little bit better. Got great pursuit right here. This is four straight plays now. First, second, third, and fourth downs on this drive. Four or five blue jerseys right there, and there's Jason Bray making a real fine play on what we call the bubble. Sort of a bubble screen is referred to as the third and fifteen like sweep. Oh, oh! Various pounds. I actually got a hand on the ball with uh, 
with the uh, wear coming in, we had a outside inside type coverage. And it's Clifton Robinson does a great job catching the ball. We need to get more out of our punt returns and, and also punt block. We hadn't even come close to trying to block enough and we need to, you know, try it more. That's Gabe back throwing deep to Carson Bailey right there. And uh, we complete a lot of those. And you yeah. know, that'll be completed more than it'll be incomplete. Because uh, the defender doesn't know where the ball is. And, well, go try to play defensive back and you'll find out. Yeah. It's hard to do. And that's great blocking right there again by our offensive line right there. And we got Cole Kublik back uh, in the ball game, and he'll play quite a bit, particularly in the second half. And I think really and truly, without having really studied the film, they did a great job. And that's Pete Jenkins right there. And I just thought our defensive line just did a superb job yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's where it had to start, Phil, up, mm -hmm. up front. And right. that's the reason we were able to make this some plays in the second This guy will eat you alive if you don't take the ball away. What a great play to give a field position there by Rodney Creighton. Mm -hmm. Rodney's back after having knee surgery. And, well, we're going to hurt it again. It we're looks excited. Like right there. <laughs> but that's all right. He, I mean, he's just excited to be back. Look, and Michael Burke. Look at the, he can't do that without blocking. It's just like that receiver said about his quarterback. He wouldn't be able to do what he does with, without him, and that's what we're getting right there, good blocking. I felt like at this stage of the game that maybe we could go ahead, you know, and sort of like Joe Lewis, you know, put a knockout punch on him, you know, and, and build some momentum, but uh, you got to give Louisiana Tech for coming back and really fighting the second half. Taking it down to the goal line now. Gabe Again, that's Michael Burke there, and I think Gabe would love to, you know, take that thing without dropping on the ground first and picking it up and scoring. But again, it's great effort and uh, punches it in there for a touchdown. Second quarter now, Retay. Got a great rush there again. I, I think you'll look at the film. And again, I haven't had a chance when we got up early and everything to do everything. But I think if you look at the film closely, you'll see number 55 around number 13, their quarterback, uh, Nardo Carson, all day long. That's yeah. a great play by a young man that had to fill in for our strong safety and uh how is rob doing rob pate has got a oblique uh, muscle pull in his in his uh, abdomen area great play there by dorsey on the reverse sets and, up uh, the uh, safety we'll get him back maybe next week talking great. about tate here comes the safety good rush by again carson as i mentioned you see number 95 uh, around him all day long and again uh got him corralled by marcus washington and charles dorsey and we had about five people in pursuit right there. Here comes a fourth and three. Now, this is a, probably the worst thing that happened yesterday, and it was my fault because I thought it was around third and one, and, and I thought it was a good call on Coach Fisher's part as far as the play selection, and, and I think if we just maybe run a little bit more intelligent, and that was a bad call on the official part. I hate to say that, but it, you know, mm. that, was not, that was a lineman that made that block, and it wasn't a wide out could maybe have delivered the knockout punch with a, with a score after Absolutely, that. but again, the dumb decision by me uh, eliminated that. So, again, apologize to him at halftime, but we said the best percentage thing we got left was the 30 minutes of the second half. So they take it in and score and make a ball game out of it. It's 19 to 14, and we'll be back in just a minute for the second half. Our congratulations to Judy Rochelle from Childersburg. She was the winner of the Auburn Football Fantasy Contest, sponsored by the Auburn Tigerettes and Tiger Hosts. She won two tickets to the Georgia game. She will eat the pregame meal with the team and walk the Tiger Walk and several other things. So thanks to everyone who participated for their support of the Tigerettes and the Tiger Hosts. They are important to this football team, Coach. Well, you know, every great university needs people like the Tiger Hosts and Tigerettes there, and they do a great job. And you take even the Tiger Walk, I tell you what, Phil, it was the most exhilarating thing I've ever experienced. First time I've ever gone from the dorm to the stadium. And, mm -hmm. But, you know, you get humble real quick sometimes. When we got all the way from the beginning to the end of the walk there and went through the gate, there was a piece of plywood about the side of this counter. And tell me about something gets back down there. Somebody stepped on the other end. I hit it, and I stumbled about 15 <laughs> feet. fell flat on my face. But uh, those things, will, they'll catch up with you. Hope no right cameras there. were uh, running on that, Coach. How about the uh, j and Bookstore Tiger of the game? Phil, really and truly, you know, it's customary to pick somebody every week, you know, but this was a team thing. They've been through an, a lot in the last several hours, and in a short period of time, and to come back and do what they did, and uh, regardless of who it was against or whatever, but uh, we're going to make it the whole team, and we might have not, maybe we didn't do maybe great in certain areas, but uh, we can make it a team effort thing. All right. Our congratulations to the entire Auburn team, Tigers of the <coughs> game. Thank you. 
the J&M Tiger of the game. Play, this is a ball game. This is a 1914 game, and Coach, uh, this team uh, is capable of scoring a lot of points. They have uh, they put 60 and 70 on the board, so they're kind of a time bomb waiting to go off. That's a great play by Courtney Rose, and in answering your question, Bill, they had 600-plus yards, 500-plus yards, basically, in the game. Great hit by Rodney Creighton right there. And that's Antoine Nolan intercepting the pass, and I don't know why he stepped out of bounds. I, you I tell you what, about that, aren't you? I tell you one thing. I don't want him <laughs> driving me in a car. I tell you that. <laughs> but uh, great hit by Rodney in making that happen right there for Antoine Nolan. That sets up the field goal. And Barone is there kicking the field goal. Boy, has he done a great job. Eight for eight. Now he is the only kicker in the league who is. Uh, uh, perfect on all of his field goals. Well, yeah, let's not be talking about being perfect because right. he's, he's making them all. <laughs> and we, uh, we've got great coverage there. Again, that's Courtney Rose and again filling in for Rob Faber. I don't consider him filling now. We've got to put him in the starting category because of what he did in Florida. And Look at this right here. Great recognition by James Callier. Mm -hmm. uh, he's coming from the Mike linebacker position there, but it's, that's good recognition to be able to make those type things happen. Got a good rush there by Marcus Washington. This third and long. And Marcus has just done a great job coming from, you know, when he was a freshman right now. And I'm sure Joe Willie is extremely proud of him because he can really rush the passer. Great recognition there on the reverse, or you might call the shovel pass to Troy Edwards. He's been running clean out of the stadium against other people and all the film, mm -hmm. all the cutups we had still on that mm -hmm. play. That's a great hit there by Antoine Nolan, I think, causing a fumble, recovered by Haven Fields. Uh, this enabled us to get points right here again, you know, within the five turnovers. You cashed four of the five turnovers. Well, that's a great execution and a great blocking right there. Ooh. And uh, I think uh, Burks, if I'm not mistaken, breaks about four or five tackles mm -hmm. right here. And this is what we've been waiting for out of Michael. Mike, Michael's got a great future. And he's a tremendous young man from Louisiana, and uh, he's got a great future. Watch this right here. Look at the pursuit. We got three, oh, yeah. four people right there on the play. Great recognition there by Jason Bray. And Going for it on fourth and two here. And this is a good play there by Quentin Reese. And uh, the middle, the inside people really and truly is what made it happen with Quit Smith coming in there late with good pursuit. And Gabe goes back to pass. And th this was a great call by Jimbo Fisher, and I thought did a great job. And you know, statistically, uh, I'm sure we'd like to have more, but uh, the school of the game is is the main thing as we put as we put everything together and again, there's our man baronis baronis kicks it through uh for his ninth field goal of the year this guy right here at quarterback and again i mean number 95 nardo boy he, he enjoys playing football i, I enjoy watching him practice and his enthusiasm and his leadership and, and you just and the best part about it he's got another year the amazing statistic is that uh, Rattay had only been sacked eight times and eight games coming into this game, and you got to him five times, Coach. That may have been the difference. Well, particularly with the tight passes they throw. Mm -hmm. That's a credit to uh, Pete Jenkins and Joe Witt, you know, with the pass rush with the front people. Fourth and and I think our coverage people had a lot to do with it. Great effort there by Gabe Gross. You know, they, he hit the soft spot. They have they camouflaged it, you know, and, and controlled the, what we call the A-gap there, or A-gaps, and... Great interception there. Good good effort as far as pursuit. Courtney Rose. Courtney played a good football game. He I'm sure so did. proud of him because we got a lot of support right at last all the time about Courtney Rose. I said, let him grow up and then we'll talk about it. But he's doing that. So uh, Joe Witt and uh, Rick Trickett doing the honors meeting the head coach on the field. You can't quite make that little choice. Well, they, 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 we asked him to do that, but I ex explained to Coach uh, Gary Kyle said that they, they would do that because I had to go up top. Mm -hmm. Coach Kyle tried to help me to go to the sideline. I said <laughs> I'd be lost, but anyhow, he had there. But I'm, you know, really proud of our coaches for handling the substitution. I thought they substitution. Yeah, there's a lot of organization that had to be. I thought they with. did a great job, and yeah. you know the circumstances and everything, and really proud of them. For that. Final word when we come back in just a moment. And coming up, Arkansas, 1 o'clock Saturday, Jordan here. It is a pay-per-view telecast, so you need to contact your cable operator to get hooked up. Or if you're a dish owner, 1-800-TV-STARS. You can get all the information on it uh, by uh, tuning to the Auburn Network website at www.aunetwork.com. And you have a busy week, Coach. You've got to reorganize things and still get your players ready for Arkansas. Phil, I'd normally get a haircut about every month. I hadn't even had time to get a haircut, but uh, <laughs> under circumstances. But hadn't had a chance to think about Arkansas. But I do know this: that uh, I put an envelope in a 
in my desk drawer who I think might win a division or the dark horse, and I had Arkansas in there. And so I took it out right hand and opened it. That's who would be there. Mm -hmm. And I did it because they've got so many tough football players. Their quarterback has linebacker mentality, but he's got a great supporting cast, and defensively they can run. They will be a worthy opponent, and we'll see you next week on the Auburn Football Review. Thank you for being with us. This has been the Auburn... Back is Culpepper. They're after him. He is hit from behind, and Whit Smith caught off a block, and he's packed him back at the 45. Set back is Max. Culpepper drifting back to throw. Looking, pump faking, firing. Pass intercepted back at the goal line. Larry Tasher picks it off. Takes the snap. Rose looking, fires one to the boundary, complete to Bailey. Bailey breaks away at 45. He's to the 40. He's to the 30. He's to the 20. He's to the 10. He is gone. I want to read you something before we do everything else. Uh, I've had this since 1966, and a great person gave it to me. It was Coach Chuck Jordan when I first started coaching here years ago. And a fight song is one thing, but I want you to listen to this. It says Auburn Creed. A lot of you probably never read it. I've had it, I've kept it on my wall all those years in some form or fashion, along with other stuff that I've cherished. It says, I believe that this is a practical world and that I can count on only what I earn. Therefore, I believe in work, hard work. I believe in education, which gives me the knowledge to work wisely and trains my mind and my hands to work skillfully. I believe in honesty and truthfulness, without which I cannot win the respect and confidence of my fellow men. I believe in sound man, mind and a sound body and a spirit that is not afraid, and in clean sports that develop these qualities. I believe in my country because it is a land of freedom, because it is my own home, and that I can best serve that country by doing justly, loving mercy, and walking humbly with my God. And because Auburn men and women believe in these things, I believe in Auburn and love it. And this was written by Dr. George uh, Petrie. But men, now, let me tell you something. You think about that, and you think about what just happened. A lot of that is in here. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Tigers came late to take a 10-6 win over Central Florida. Coach, maybe it was a little fortunate, but well-deserved after the way the defense played in 60 minutes of football. Phil, I didn't realize that... Uh we really and truly played that well. The only thing is we let Central Florida dominate the clock, but I think it, uh, and I didn't realize until I had to go to a function last night and got back that they had accumulated talking about Central Florida 278 yards, like 182 passing, and a guy that had the statistics, statistics coming into the game, I thought it was incredible except for the time. And, uh, but any time you can win a football game. I've seen them win a lot of different ways. We'll, sure, we'll certainly take it. They can't take it years to come. They'll never know what happened. That's right. It'll still be 10 to 6. Let's go to the dressing room now and talk to some of the players who had a large hand in that win yesterday. Uh, truly, you know, he had to give us all credit, but uh, he, he's a good quarterback. I, you know, I, I'd be looking forward to seeing him playing on next le next level and everything. We just wanted, we know he's a great athlete. We had to contain him, let him into the ball. We just wanted to get out there in the best way we could. I think we showed him a lot of stuff that confused him, and uh, we just broke on the ball, and uh, you know, got a lot of fortunate breaks on the defensive side of the ball, and just had him out of the end zone. That's really all you can ask for. Well, we just felt that you know everyone could get around him and make him lot make a lot of bad decisions. I think. Our cornerbacks made a good decision on breaking on the ball at times and just made, really made him make a lot of bad decisions. Yeah, we deserved that win today. We just kept working hard, sawing that wood. You know, the offense was struggling a little bit today, but 
was all because of halftime. Just keep on, keep on working, keep on working. Something good happened. And we finally got that last turnover, gave it to Carson Gabe, and they made it happen. The coach has told us all along, never give up, never give up. We're going to get the ball back. Our defense played a great game. The defense held out. They got the ball. We just went out. Just executed, and I just made a big play. Carson Bailey was, did an unbelievable job. Clifton catching that ball on fourth down, diving to the sidelines. Both those guys stepped it up and did a great job. And line, keep them off of me. They, they're great. first half of play it was homecoming on the plains and also uh, senior day as you'll see the Auburn seniors were introduced had their families with them see uh, Charles Dorsey Carl Levine right there I'll tell you what uh, Phil our fans we really appreciate what they did yesterday our players appreciate it they didn't leave that's right and uh, they stayed right there what happened there at the end here we're all having a hard time to contain him, and he, again, I just said he's an incredible athlete. And he lifts with the lineman when he lifts weights, and as Charles Dorsey, you know, chasing him there, and again, great play by Havenfield. Haven played his best game. Third down play there, stop him, so force him to kick the field goal on the opening drive. Uh, this was about a, what, 14, 15, 16 play drive, mm -hmm. consumed a lot of time, and the first third down situation was one that really hurt us. He just gave back the throw and I really and truly recommend trying to get enough yardage for the first down if we're going to run a route because I think we come up short on third down there. Here's a third and two for them on their next drive. Right there, we're not really breaking on the football. That's a long out cut and of course, you know, those things are risky. And third and five here. And we make them punt, I think, if, or they go for it on fourth. They're going for it on fourth right. down. And I think they make the fourth down conversion. Now, this is actually we should have we had said we should have really truly knocked that one down and we go back and gain that yardage you know the difference right there but I guess you know, that instinct is strong you know, Larry Larry's young yeah. he'll, he'll, he'll remember you know what to do in the future and after we talk about it Michael Burke's got great blocking right there by our offensive line uh, we get a little bit of block downfield you know Phil the thing we need to do is we need to start breaking some long runs. I look, you know, and look at some things on TV every now and then. I see other people breaking long runs, and, and we need to quit shaking and head north and south more. Okay, the drive stalled. Here they come again. This is a great play by Nardo Carson right there. Great rush. The controlled passing game. It's really hard to pin, isn't it? I tell you what, it's it, it's it's like running pitch sweeps and what have you, and, and that's the reason they control a lot of the time. We got. Uh, a lot of people after him right there. Marcus Washington coming up with the tackle for the sack. I think we had seven sacks yesterday, and we had a little special deal on right there. He's a third and long. Going to get the interception on the throwing ball and set them up again. Again, they're in what they call a high-low middle coverage type thing, and uh, we didn't see the guy's great job of stripping him right there. And uh, they alertly had players, you know, that got on it. And now they're deep in our ter territory. We've got to see what's going to happen. They're here. on the goal line here with first and goal with the eight. There he is. He's strong. And, you know, number eight, Culpepper, he's, in, he's an athlete that can win a ball game by himself. And you don't find many that can do that. A great interception by Jason Bray. And, you know, we were so close, Phil, to having so many of in those interceptions mm -hmm. just you know, what if he just tips and stays right there on the edge and goes down the mm -hmm. sideline 90 something yards, looks like Larry Cash, who you'll see in a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're running the option, and the reason though those are checkoff plays, and and there's Rob Pate, and I think Courtney Rose in on the tackle right there, and we got to know and analyze exactly they're going to count six on one side, five on another, and go away from the overload. This was a short drive set up by a punt return, a... 30-yard punt return, so they go up 6-0. It's late in the quarter now. Auburn has done virtually nothing on offense in the first half. This is a sprint out with maximum protection, and, and we really, truly, really, when we say maximum protection, we need to go ahead and try to knock all the hands down. I mean, we, we get up that line of scrimmage and idle, and we need to get everybody blocking and go after them. At the punt and hold them one more time to... That's Nardo uh, Carson again, along with Havenfield. I tell you what, Nardo, do you just keep on doing what you're doing? I tell you what, you'll be a pretty high preseason All-American come next year. I promise you the way he plays and gets after He people. plays tough. He certainly does. We'll be back in just a minute. 
Time now for this week's Winn-Dixie Tiger Quiz, presented by Nabisco, makers of great tasting Chips Ahoy, Nilla Wafers, and Oreo cookies. Who was the Tigers' leading rusher during the undefeated 1993 season? It led the Tigers and the SEC in rushing in 1993 with 1,205 yards on 199 carries. And that's today's Winn-Dixie Tiger Quiz, presented by Nabisco. A lot of pageantry at the half, and we want to congratulate Miss Wynn Everett, who is Miss Homecoming for Auburn this year. Coach, you're in the uh, dressing room with all that going on, trying to figure out how to get some offense going after holding this guy to six points, which is a remarkable thing. He's the best quarterback in the country, I would think. Well, again, you know, our defense did a good job, you know, and again, they say, you know, bend but don't break. You'd like to, you know, be able to not bend and not break either, but offensively, the big thing, you know, we, our plan was to keep number eight on the sideline. And you say, well, we had 88 yards, I think, rushing and 152 passing and put it all together. You're talking about 240, and by the, today's standards, that's not very good. But the uh, biggest thing the last 30 minutes, we had a chance to come back, you know, and, and try to play better. biggest thing is we're just not holding on to the football when it's thrown to us. And, uh, and we know Gabe is still young, and we almost made an adjustment in the game. But I think overall, the thing we need to do is try to have some more imagination you know we're not you know we're really keeping people off balance mm. jm bookstore tigers of the game coach well you know i think it's been customary maybe one player or whatever you had a lot of people really that deserve it but nardo carson for his play and we think that we'll go more than one and haven fields who played his best ball game i think he was involved in about 11 tackles and a couple of sacks and larry casher had Two, uh, two big interceptions, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then Carson Bailey's run. You think it was big? I think, I think it was <laughs> very large. That 58-yard uh, catch and run was uh, the crowning blow to a, uh, an afternoon of exciting football. So our congratulations to all four members of the Auburn team, J&M Bookstore Tigers of the game. The j &M second half, again, uh, Coach Oliver's already mentioned it, but congratulations to the Auburn fans. They stayed to the very end, and they were rewarded, Coach. That's a pass from uh, Gabe to Carson Bailey. I wish we could catch one of those every now and then and stay in bounds and make the defensive back miss. We can get a lot more yardage. Just some great execution by the offense right there on the screen. And we block a few more people, not late, but early downfield, we might make more yardage than that. But the drive stalls after a couple of first downs and have to give it up. Here he goes, uh, hey. Culpepper on a fourth and one. And he's pretty hard to stop on the sneak. He's been doing it all year long against everybody. 250 pounds, that's a... And we've got a little thing on, a special type thing there with our inside linebacker and our, one of our nickel backs there and Havenfield's making sacks, one of the seven sacks we had. Here comes the third interception of the day. We've got you know, real good coverage there. That's Rob Pate, and we had a special low type coverage there, and Rob, you know, he and Brad, they uh, wear, they baited it, and Rob's just getting better and better. And he's been bunged up a little bit, you know, with his ankle and a few things, but he's and getting ribs. better and better. And experience, you know, again, paying off. We got good blocking right there. If we go ahead and get the block downfield, heck, we can stay outside and keep going right there. And Michael probably could have gotten another 5, 10, 11, 12 yards. Third and four coming here. Going to get a pass interference call, saves the drive. Gabe did a great job getting that off. They came with two outside blitzes, and uh, we didn't, we couldn't account for the outside on the weak side. 44-yard field goal. Baronis makes his 10th of the year. And was it big? Yes, yes sir. Yes, very. very big. But they come right back and drive down the field. They're down on the goal line here. Now we, again, you know, back to the wall, and great pursuit there. And there's Ryan Taylor and, and Charles Dorsey. Charles played well. And this is one of the plays I was talking about, an interception by Larry Kesher, which was really big. And, you know, the guy just reaches out. And I thought from the press box, I thought, you know, we're going to go all the way with that. Mm -hmm. Got him by the collar. Look at him. This is Whit Smith. Glad to see Whit, you know, make some plays. He's a young freshman linebacker that... Uh, He's going to get a lot uh, of playing time. Yeah, because so. I tell you what, uh, Phil, we're really decimated to a certain degree at our inside linebacker. But really and truly as a team. Never seen as many injuries. Mm -hmm. Great play by Dorsey and Antoine Nolan right there. We can run an option here. Uh, Late pitch. Which, which is good, and that's part of the option, making the right decision and making the pitch, you know, right there in front. Third and one. Give it to Nelson. Right here, our line does a good job. They've got an overload there, and I was really scared, you know, in running the fullback belly right there that uh, with the alignment defense was in, whether we could make it. 
right here we're running the option again we get everything sealed off to the inside and you know I you know everything I still think Geno James is really playing good he's taking great pride look at his his protection right there for an example gets it stripped this was big on Central Florida's part right here and we talked about managing football and uh, that was awfully costly right there this is uh, looking like maybe a put away drive here Culpepper on third and ten now he only gets eight. This was big. They made eight yards on, on uh, third ten. They wound up punting right here. They got good pursuit. And one of those backup nine irons stays on the inside five. Well, I oh, talked to a few people last night after the game. They said one of these days the ball's going to bounce our way a little, <laughs> a little more. And uh, this is great effort right here on Gabe's part. He wraps it up again, talking about managing football. He's Sure lost one, you know, last week like that. And, but again, it's a big first down. First gets nine. And when we're backed up like that, you know, if you don't go for a score, you know, it's awfully important that uh, we get the ball out, you know, if we do have to punt. Third and two. If we move our feet around a little bit, you know, and elude that guy and make the pass a little bit softer, a little bit more accurate, we got a chance. Of course, I still think you can get those things, or we do. That's uh, Rob Pate with the coverage win right there. We ought to be a little bit quicker on making the play on the draw, and that's the reason we called it. But uh, they score here. That's Charles Dorsey making a great play. Uh, we put our defensive tackles in a in a bind on some things, you know. So, and this is right at the end right there where it was really big, and hey, we were very fortunate in getting the fumble recovery where they didn't handle it. And, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, Rob Pate wound up with right. one fifty-one to go as Auburn gets its final possession. This is big. You take fourth down. Clifton had missed some passes previously in the game, and the hardest catch of all day, he makes it and when we have to have it. Protection was good. Protection is good here. Watch it. Gives us a chance to watch the run, and again, the flag scared us to death, but, you know, they got uh, Carson by the face mask. The thing, one thing we need to learn that in this type of situation, celebration, if we got a 15-yard penalty, it could be costly. Well, and in particular with the tight quarterback that Central Florida's got. And he is, he's close to the best in the nation. He's a complete package. Really? Well, this was a great, great run, and I believe that's the fastest I've seen Carson run all year. <laughs> but they still have 57 seconds on the clock. Time we for this man to get him in the Great rush here. Look at the effort right there. I mean, you look at uh, Dawson and, and uh, Carson right there great push by the inside we got good push with three-man rush right here and what we want to do is bat it down interceptions are no good you bat it to the ground and end the football game because you've seen so many where it's flipped up in there that's coach Mike Cruzy and uh, head coach I tell you what he and his staff I tell you what they'll be complimented on a great job Phil we'll be back in just a minute Welcome to the Auburn Football Review, the 102nd meeting of Auburn and Georgia, and strangely enough, uh, as has been the case recently, won by the visiting team. The Dogs of Georgia win by a score of 28-17, but it was a game of missed opportunities for Auburn, Coach Bill Oliver. We had our chances, but again, Phil, you talking about our fans and everything, the 102nd outing, I tell you what, they, they were really fantastic. They did a great job hanging in there. I just wish we could have hung in there as well as them. And, in some areas we did, in some areas we didn't. We had our chances to win, but you got to give Georgia credit for what happened and win the football game. As Auburn did last year, Georgia obviously made good use of the off week. I think it made a lot of difference. I know, you know, with a youthful team like we've got, I know it would have made a lot of difference and would this week too, but we got to keep going. Let's go in the dressing room now and we'll hear some comments from some of the Auburn players. Yeah, I think they did a great job out there, Georgia. Uh, great football team. I wish them luck on the rest of the season and in that bowl game. And it was just at times we had them, we knew we could score on them. It was just times we just didn't um, execute. After uh, everything we've gone through this year, you know, I felt like we went out there and we played our hardest. You know, we did make mistakes, but, you know, those are going to happen. So, uh, you know, next week we'll go out and fight hard again. And, uh, you know, we feel like if, you know, we can play mistake-free football, we feel like we can beat anyone we play. But we, we, go, we go out there, we're just going to keep trying our best to execute, do everything that we can possible. And I, I understand what you're saying about the error-free. We got to be Alabama, you know. That's the one that counts. And if offense can come out 
and play like they play tonight, then we're going to make it our job, make it our business to help them. Just got a little confusing that time. They still make some right decisions, and uh, we didn't play as well as we wanted to. But, you know, we got to bounce back and prepare for Bama. That's pretty much in the same situation was last year when we had that week off and we went down there to Georgia and they were playing and, you know, made us more sharper, you know, that week off pretty much, you know, got people well rested and that's hurt and came back and they was full steam today. In Auburn, Alabama, great crowd, as uh, Coach Oliver mentioned, uh, always for this series. It's one of the finest in the country. Uh, they play hard on Saturday and on Sunday they forget about it, Coach. Go on to the next game. Well, you don't have any choice. You know, that's the way it is. And that's a process that we go through in athletics or anything else. And the sun came up this morning. The big thing we didn't do at the beginning of the ball game, Phil, we didn't rush the pass very good. And, and we enabled Quincy to Carter to, you know, do a lot of things there. And Look around a lot, huh? Yeah, and that's great effort by Leonardo Carson coming all the way from rushing the passer down where they found that good tight end. And again, there he is standing back there, and our corner didn't do a very good job there. It's not the safety's fault. It might look like that. Our corner should sink back into the hole we call the void area right there, and he didn't do a very good job with his eyes. No, Gabe really played uh, by far his best ball game. Uh, being young and everything, he hits uh, Clifton Robinson there. We got good protection. Uh, we played really good in the first half and the opening drive of the second half offensively. You take it. There's a good blocking there by Geno James and on the option play there to third and Michael one. Burke. And, and we haven't been good on third and one. And we get a big uh, first down conversion there, and we do a good job blocking up front again with uh, Kublik and Curry and Sears. And, and Baronis comes in and does another fine job kicking the field goal. Our protection is good. Coach Cricket, you know, works with that. And, and uh, Baronis knocks it through and gets us back into on the scoreboard there. We've got good pursuit here. That's, uh, that's Kenny right there coming in there and uh, Kenny Kelly and uh, coming from the inside linebacker spot. We had to improvise a little bit. Got great, great pursuit here. Good pass rush by Dorsey and, and uh, Dunlap and uh, Carson there. We get the ball back and, and uh, as Gabe throwing again to a clip in there. Perfect strike, good protection. The thing we did, we got some hands down for the first time. Third and six here and get a pass interference penalty to keep the drive moving. Well, we were fortunate there. Again, uh, a situation where we're getting pretty good protection, real good protection. Same except drive. right here, we don't get very good protection here. And you see the, you know, the end result is, a, is an interception. Turn of blitz. First and ten for the dogs going the other way, and they're going to get it back. I think that's Haven Fields making a tip, and, and it's a good drop on his part. And Jason Bray, who intercepts the ball, uh, we wound up in a very unusual alignment there defensively. We something we didn't even practice, you know, during the week. Maybe we all do that more often, but uh, it's stopped on third and one. And that's what I'm talking about. We we got to do a better job on third and one. You say, well. You got one more football game. It'd be nice to make those conversions, you know, every time. And we, you know, we had a lot of near could, could ifs again, you know, where if you look right here, we Still almost, you know, got it <laughs> walking the end zone there, and we had about four or five of those. It could have been, you know, six points easily. Right here, we don't do a very good job. Uh, they in a spread tight formation then we still got to leave enough people inside you know to make the play and we get blocked pretty bad there this was a key moment in the game for to keep it from getting out of hand and take the ball and drive it for a score here that's uh reed tankersley making that catch his first catch of the season i think and this is a great 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 throwing catch right here and carson bailey you know he broke the all-time receiving record at auburn there and had a great game as a matter of fact uh, and we'll talk about him in just a minute but there he is again and uh, Carson really came to play Saturday night. He'll be playing in a lot of all the postseason games likewise. That's Rusty Williams there in the flat. There's a good second pass by Dave, second one, and that's, you know, that's a good call by Coach Fisher. I thought he, I thought Coach Fisher called a great game. And, uh, there's a third one. Leaping Heath Evans and back in Heath action. Heath back in the lineup, and uh, uh, it's good to have him back. And next week, he ought to be a little bit better than this past week. Again, uh, we've got good blocking there again by offensive line. 
Kublik, Sears, and we played Simmons a lot. We got him back, and and uh, and he ought to be better come next week. Mm -hmm. And there we got great blocking there on the sweep going in, and and uh, Demontre Carter scoring from close in there. And here we got a situation here. We get on the board. This is this is one of the biggest plays of the ball. Mm -hmm. Right. And first of all, they've got a lineman downfield about seven, eight yards, and there's supposed to be some type screen and we've got a guy playing the half coverage is trying to play the screen up there and instead of being back there and his responsibility and that's my fault and uh, just like right there missed tackles and, and letting the guy get about 10 more yards after the reception but you got again give Georgia credit and this is a great great thing is that first of all it's illegal but a great great recognition on our part and Brad Ware makes an interception here and it was big before the half fell. I mean, we, right. we, den we denied points right there, which gives us a chance to go in and regroup and talk about some things and against a talented football team. But that big, big play right there before the half after we'd gone ahead, you know, that was costly. All right, we'll come back in just a minute after these words. Okay, halftime. And, uh, Coach, I uh, got a chance to speak with uh, Bo Jackson. He was there and, uh, as you know, uh, had a... Uh, presentation just before the game bowl will be uh, inducted into the college football hall of fame early next month and he came back to auburn uh, for a visit uh, and it was uh, and he and of course he has a lot of friends and a lot of folks enjoyed uh, uh, remembering old times with number 34 coach he we, was a good one. we started to dress him out incognito but Wouldn't it uh, been nice? <laughs> the way he looks is pretty hard to do <laughs> yeah uh, you elected captain Yes, we, we did that uh, Thursday evening, and uh, our offensive captain that the team selected was Carson Bailey, and we had a tie with our defensive captain selection and Charles Doris and Ryan Taylor, and then our special team captain is Brent Turner. And, uh, what a career they, Brent has had, boy. And well, these guys, they've got, a, they've got a tough job, you know, trying to get us ready, you know, for this ball game, but, uh, you know, we'll talk about that later. Uh, and your JDM Bookstore Tiger of the game, what do you think? Well, we, we had some guys that really were deserving, but uh, Carson Bailey played by far his best ball game. And in the second half of the season, he's, he's really come on. He had nine receptions for 114 yards, I think, and a touchdown, and, and played exceptionally hard. He blocked good as well as catch the football, and uh, he's our j and player of the game there. Uh, congratulations, Carson, the all-time career leader for Auburn in <coughs> passes received. And uh, we'll be back in just a minute. And uh, the Tigers are going to do what uh, Bill Oliver and the coaches always preach. Come Which, out in the second half and move the football. That's great running right there on Michael's part, uh, Michael Burks. And we take the football. And gosh, in about maybe two minutes, we take it on down the field. We've got the split fee option right here. And uh, we pick up the first down there with Michael carrying the ball again with Gabe pitching it to him. Here's something that Auburn hasn't done enough that really helps uh, in situations. Coach. This is a big, big catch right here by Cooper, and uh, he's not very tall, but he, he was pretty tall on that reception right there, and he gave us a big chunk now, and now we're down inside the 20 here, and, and we get a play-action pass, and great catch by Carson, ball slightly thrown behind, but he makes a good body adjustment, and that's what they're going to look at you know, as far as Carson, the next level, you know, making the adjustment, you know, on a fully thrown mm -hmm. football. Here, we've got good pressure, and that's another one of the near misses. We're in a man coverage there, and uh, great job by Rob Pate. We've got a good pursuit here with Brad Ware, and, and uh, on the option right there, there's a third down, I think, in something They situation. decide to go for it here on fourth and 14 at the uh, 35. We want to make sure that we bat this down on a play, play like this and not try to intercept. Just get it down on the ground. And we are very fortunate that wasn't a touchdown by, of course, you know, the great athlete, mm -hmm. athlete champ, Bailey. Well, they use him, well. don't they? Mercy. Well, he is a fine football player. I think he could be a marathon runner after this, with as many plays as he plays. He plays about 80-something a game. That's a great throw and catch right there. The protection was not the greatest in... Uh, we at least have got a big chunk of first down. We've got a, you know, their quarterback got a lot of time to throw right here. And there's another one of those situations where it'd be nice if we get the football about our 45 right there and look it in and make things happen. That goes 35, 
It's good pursuit by Haven Phil on the option. We played the option. We were worried about it, you know, because sometimes we're a little light numbered on maybe one side there, and, and that's certainly what they were checking to. Georgia's got good pursuit right there, and in the second half, really and truly, Phil, they, uh, Third Georgia got, they, they won after the first drive. They started, you know, sort of defeating us there, but that's a good throw and catch by Gabe right there, and, we, and the biggest thing, again, we got the hands down, and it enabled Gay to get something, you know, something on the football. Right here, we didn't continue finish off our route right there. We cut it off short, and that's, uh, I think Kirby Small right there for Georgia intercepting the football with safety. Obviously, I think the guys don't spend much time tackling. It's obvious right there, <laughs> I promise you. Here's a second and one. That was a situation. We got good pursuit right there. Got very good coverage. Watch him on third and one. And this is really big. We played a lot better defensively. I didn't realize it, Phil, until I was, you know, looking at the film this morning there, and I didn't realize, you know, that we played that much better in the second half with the exception of you know one drive now right here is when we've got a chance you know to really make something happen and we can take it you know and take the game away from you know our opponent here georgia and put it in our hands and, and if we stick this one in right here or either get points period Ryan taylor got the block well we got a delay of the game penalty and, and you know what we're doing it shouldn't happen and but it did and and we wind up, you know, going for a real, real long field goal, about a, what, a 55 yard. 55 yard, yard. plenty of leg, just wide left. But you can put that in your memory bank, Coach. You can kick it from out there. Right here, this was another one of the big plays of the game. We we went sort of a gamble-type defense, you know, and instead of, you know, just staying, you know, with the guy, knowing who we're defending. That's the big thing, know who he is and the type of talent and what they maybe like to go to. We didn't do a very good job. And this is that one drive where we didn't do a good job on defense in second half. Other than that, we played pretty good. Mm -hmm. This is a slant again to Carson Bailey catch. there. Carson did a great job hanging on there. So that's a pretty good lick by the Georgia guy. Fourth quarter now. Good punt by Zills. A great punt and got good coverage here. Kenny Kelly. Strong uh, Adelaide. And, uh, and put Smith there. Now the pitch sweep played extremely well. We got good pursuit. I thought uh, Marcus Washington played it well there. Our linebackers played it good inside out, scraping off. Third down. This is a great interception, and I think the re and the reason I say great is because of what we were in. And that's Haven Fields on the interception, and then you know the tight end Hicks is about six five. Haven's probably five eleven and a half. Another opportunity here. Because you can score that's, and go for two, and then the field goal will tie. And that's great running right there by, by Carson, as well as catching the football. Uh, and, uh, protection gets pushed back into the face of the quarterback. And that is a good coverage and also a good push by Georgia. And uh, you got to give them credit there. We've got uh, good pursuit there on defense. And don't recommend arm tackling. Be good get behind our shoulder pad, you know, and drive people back. Second long. You can see the ability of a good quarterback right there. The talent of number 17, Quincy Carter. You know, a lot of guys could never have gotten back on the football and recovered it. And we might have, you know, but you can see his quickness and his athleticism as him. And here's Carson Bailey on the slant and great running there. And if we block somebody downfield, we might spring him, you know, and go all the way instead of standing there looking around. Third and six at the 42. Got good protection here. Mr. Robinson. First down to get it down to the 27. Yeah, good protection here. Had enough time really truly to find somebody as opposed to throwing an interception. And this was, you know, somewhat costly right here. We still got plenty of time to get back in the football game. They see, our guys, game, but, get it back. but we, you know, our guys are still trying, Phil. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're somewhat youthful. And, uh, but they're still trying. And we talked about it at halftime. And I don't think they will be careful there, Ryan. But I don't think really and truly that uh, realized that we could have gone on and taken charge of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the youth right now. Back in just a minute with a final word. Well, Coach, this has been a difficult, even a frustrating year in a lot of ways, but a win at Legion Field next Saturday night would uh, put a lot of salve in some wounds. I feel it'd be great medicine for everybody. And, and, uh, but the thing we've got to do to 
to give us a chance, something that we haven't done all year. We, we've done some things better, like our kicking game was better. Our kickoff return was better. We blocked the punt. We didn't even come close to that this year. And it was better in that aspect. He's got to go with, you know, doing some things. We did some things better on offense. Uh, defensively, not quite as good, and we've been doing some things better on defense, you know, all year long. The biggest thing is see if we can pool everything together to give us a chance to win as a team. Have that one good game. That's right. It's on ESPN, and the Auburn Network will be on the air at 4.30 for Auburn, Alabama next Saturday, and we'll see you on Sunday for the final show of the year. Thank you for being with us, and we'll be back next week.